in the back. He's back there in case there's a fire. I appreciate you know, the board and, and being here. Dana Terhune, our t Tiger, no, our Tualatin Tiger School District Board Chair. She was here earlier. Did she have to leave? She had to leave. They have a budget meeting tonight. Yeah, budget. <laughs> so of our, of our visiting dignitaries, I mentioned Sherry Wantland from CWS, um, are your local government, your men and women, who preside over and set the direction and, and make our city what it is. Our council president, Monique Bikeman. We have, um, and her escort uh, from the YAC, her son, TJ, um, uh, or Colin, um, Ed Truax, and Ed had to leave, Ed was here, but he's on the water board and oh, they're worrying about how to do water rights over there. Uh, you remember those days, Craig. Frank Bubenick, 12th City Council, Frank. Joel Davis, Joel, thank you. Wade Brooksby in the back. Um, and Nancy Grimes, is Nancy here? I didn't see her come in. Nancy, these are the men and women who do dedicate hours and hours and hours for 20 bucks off their water bill. And, and you know, as you guys know, every decision that we make, there are folks that say that's a great decision, and there are folks who say, what in the world are you doing? And sometimes we, we're that among ourselves, right? I mean, and that's okay, because if we all thought the same way, if seven of us thought the same way, we wouldn't need six of us. So it's pretty important that we have that sort of perspective. Your government is a participative government. We have 10 standing committees and any number of ad hoc committees, depending on the need, comprising nearly 100 people who advise the city council, but more importantly, roll up their sleeves and work to guide the effort of the, of the staff that implement our strategic plans. So we're going to go through this quickly, but it's important. I mentioned your name or I mentioned the name of your committee, because I've invited all our committee folks to be here. Raise your hand or, or, your, or, or your hat or something. Go through them quickly. We have the Architectural Review Board. We have, yeah, there's one. We have a Twelfth and Arts Advisory Committee. There you go, thank you. Budget Committee, I feel like an auction. To a Core Area Parking District Board. Anyone from the, the Core Area Board here? There in the back, thank you. Um, Twelfth and Lib Library Advisory Committee. Twelfth and Arts Advisory Committee. And we have some arts folks here. Um, Tualatin Parks Advisory Committee. That was like our first advisory committee. The Tualatin Planning Commission. Yeah, there you guys are. A Tualatin Tomorrow Advisory Committee, of course. The Juanita Poll Center Advisory Committee. Where's Joe? And, and Monique. Um, Tualatin Youth Advisory Committee. Stand up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the grassroots efforts of citizen engagement in our town are the citizen involvement organizations. These neighborhood congresses, if you will, they comprise the bedrock, really, of participatory government. Uh, they're the forums where information is disseminated out, where opinions are vetted, where, where uh, discussion occurs, and more importantly, where feedback is derived to come back to the city. I want a big shout out to Jan Gent, I don't think she's here, but Mike Riley, where you at? And others who were instrumental in developing these CIOs, but more importantly, you guys are has-beens, the most important thing are the current officers of the seven CIOs who donate their time, their talents in organizing these events, keeping the information flowing. If you're a CIO officer, raise your hand. Yeah, good, thank you, Ben Willie and Robert and others, thank you. So look, all this energy that we have from these folks, all this commitment, all this dedication to our community, community would really be impotent if not for an equally committed city staff. Sherilyn Lombos, our city manager, has built and organized a crack team, and I'm so grateful, really, for their spirit, for their dedication, for their hours, for their intellect, for their commitment. So the staff in the room, raise your hands. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you, thank you to all the city staff. So what a tremendous year it's been. 2013, 2013 was really special. I couldn't be more proud than to have the opportunity to have been mayor during such a momentous time as this centennial year. I was a little troubled by someone, I don't know if it was Jim or someone who said, I've finished my 20 years, am I finished? I um, but after all of the fun events of this last year, Jim, I do feel like I'm 100 years old. <laughs> I mean, eh, I'm out of breath. We hung banners, we produced a play commemorating the incorporation of Tualatin in 1913. We unveiled the Visual Chronicles, displaying the century in art. The governor signed a resolution that was introduced by uh, Representative Parrish and Senator Devlin. U.S. Congresswoman uh, uh, Suzanne Bonamici, and I didn't see Natalie here, and I hope I didn't, over didn't overlook Natalie, um, uh, read, created, and composed, and read in eloquent eloquent entry into the congressional record. Um, 
The chamber hosted the crawfish festival with fireworks. We welcomed the Centennial Baby. The Winona, Winona Grange hosted uh, the big dinner dance event. The Tualatin Historical Society held a discovery challenge. We buried a time capsule, uh, which is to be opened up in 50 years. We'll still be around for that. And a big 100-year thank you to the uh, Centennial Planning Committee. So those of you who are on that committee, you, you did a bang-up job. Thank you very much. So let's take a few minutes and uh, get me off of here. And let's look at um, a video that Sarah created for us celebrating 100 years of, of community in Tualatin. Hello, I'm Lou Ogden, and I'm privileged to serve as the Mayor of Tualatin. 2013 was a year that will go down in the history books as one of our most exciting ever. The community celebrated a major milestone this year, the city's 100th birthday. There were so many wonderful events to commemorate this centennial year and to celebrate 100 years of building community. Tualatin has evolved into the community you know and love today thanks to years of thoughtful planning engaged and involved community members, and through the support of the Tualatin business community. We're home to over 26,000 residents and more than 1,600 businesses employing 22,000 people. We enjoy a unique small town feel with all the big city amenities. Our vibrant neighborhoods are attractive, they're well-maintained and safe. Our parks offer an array of recreational amenities for all ages. The Tualatin Commons brings the community together throughout the year. So for example, the farmer's market, there are many summer events, the pumpkin regatta, and starry nights and holiday lights stand out the year. We also enjoy strong partnerships with the award-winning Tiger Tualatin School District and a rich, diverse business community, which all contribute to making our city the best in the Portland metropolitan area Having so many things to celebrate made for quite the party this year. We kicked off the year with a commemorative centennial tabloid published by the Times, and new banners hung throughout downtown to highlight and set the stage for the party. The summer took the party outdoors with centennial-themed concerts, movies, and other events. The Crawfish Festival was a culminating event where everyone had, if you pardon the pun, claws for celebration which was, in fact, this year's theme. There was birthday cake for all and a special Centennial fireworks display. It was the party of the century. While we had a lot of fun in 2013, we also accomplished a lot of good work. Last year, the council convened to set goals for the future. We have made great progress on these goals, which will build on the history of the last 100 years and advance to Wallaton in the next century of community building. Having a connected, informed, and engaged citizenry is one of the goals which the Council set in 2012, and it's one of the most important in our city. There are many individuals who give their time and their talent to help steer the course for Tualatin through their involvement with the city's advisory committees, their participation in their neighborhoods or the citizen involvement organizations, and their efforts volunteering through the city's volunteer program. Thank you to all for your input and your efforts and your engagement. For the past several years, despite the national economic recession, Tualatin has continually grown at a steady clip. 2013 was no exception, with many new buildings nearing completion and another significant development on the rise. The most significant projects under construction today include the multi-use apartment complex called Eddie Line at Bridgeport and the Marquee Assisted Living Center on Boone's Ferry Road. Now these two projects alone bring a total of about $27 million of private sector investment to our town. Other major investments in 2013 include a remodel of our Fred Meyer store, an expansion for LAM research, and Meridian Park hospital improvements, and the remodel of the Trailblazers practice facility here in Tualatin. Over a thousand building permits were issued with a total value 
of around $46 million. Twalton has a very nice downtown. This was a vision that was set forth since I've been in the business in the last 30 years. And it's, it's fulfilled it because there has been a plan. And it keeps the community diverse, it keeps it strong, it has a great tax base, and it has a wide, broad-based employment uh, base in the city that I think helps the vitality of the town a lot. They have good schools, housing in different price levels, it's safe, uh, there's a lot of services that are available, it has a city center which is exceptionally important I think, and Twalton has the infrastructure to attract business. Over the past few years, residents have begun to see changes in our downtown, with a new gateway added in 2012 and a rework of Martin Azzi Avenue in 2013, and the beginnings of the Nyberg Rivers redevelopment. The city of Twalton temporarily closed Martin Azzi Avenue in the heart of downtown. The purpose of this closure was to replace the deteriorating water and sewer lines and improve the roadway by repaving and adding bike lanes. The city really appreciates the patience of the downtown business community while this road work was closed for an entire month. 2014 brings even more excitement to our downtown with the development of the Kmart site, now known as Nyberg Rivers. This redevelopment is at Tualatin's front door, where CenterCal will be constructing a shopping center which will include the anchor tenant of Cabela's, as well as New Seasons and others which have yet to be announced. We are poised to have another great year with the addition of Nyberg Rivers, which is estimated to bring tens of millions of dollars more private sector development to Tawala. In the last couple of years, the city has been working in planning for the future of our transportation system. Enhancing mobility and connectivity in Tualatin has been the number one topic for many years. And we continue to make good strides toward improving our transportation system. Last February, the city council voted to adopt the transportation system plan or TSP. The TSP update was a community-led effort which identified 80 new projects to enhance transportation in town. Professional estimates indicate that the TSP will reduce congestion at 20 of the 30 major intersections in the city. In addition, the city is also wrapping up the linking Tualatin and the Southwest Corridor planning efforts. Linking Tualatin is a project to engage our citizens in an effort to provide input to Metro and to TriMet regarding our community's specific needs and desires for the location of increased transit service. Well, transit actually helps instill economic development in the region, and so that's really important by itself. It provides access to jobs and employment for people. Uh, it um, removes cars from the road so there's more room for trucks and freight and those kinds of activities that, that really do help generate economic growth in our region. But it is an incredibly important tool in building uh, walkable, livable communities and I know Tualatin has made some tremendous progress in that regard. But I also think transit is an incredible part of a ladder that people can use to become more prosperous. Our access to the community colleges, to training centers, to job sites are absolutely essential to bringing people up the ladder of prosperity. And so I think transit is important for all those reasons. More recently, we've of course been working with many members of the community on the Southwest Corridor Study as well, which is a really important effort that's led by Metro right now that TriMet participates in, as does Tualatin, as a partner. And what that is looking at is how can high capacity transit provide better service to the whole Southwest, Tualatin included. So that's what the uh, Southwest Service Enhancement Plan is all about. And we like to say that the result that we hope for will be a shared vision of transit that we can all begin working toward. These initiatives will result in new long-term service planning that will identify areas for future service and opportunities to partner with jurisdictions and the private sector for access to transit improvements. Twalton is a safe and healthy community and residents want to keep it that way. The city has many proactive programs in place to ensure we meet this goal, from community policing to the new HEAL initiative, 
which stands for Healthy Eating and Active Living. Tualatin is doing its part to ensure the health and safety of our residents. Your Tualatin Police Department does an outstanding job of keeping our neighborhoods, our parks, our business community safe through a variety of enforcement activities, but most importantly, through their community policing efforts. While the department spends much of their time responding to calls and doing enforcement work, our police are also out in the community participating in several non-enforcement events, such as the Twelfth and Crawfish Festival and the Pumpkin Regatta, National Night Out, and Drug Take Back events. Our police are able to serve so much and achieve so much through their community policing efforts. We have an exciting new addition to the police force this year. Zoe is Tualatin's new drug detection canine. Zoe's a two-year-old chocolate lab. She came to us from Pacific Coast Canine in Washington State. And uh, she has been trained to detect the odors of uh, controlled substances, uh, heroin, methamphetamine, cocaine, and marijuana, um, which are all illegal in the state of Oregon. And uh, with her uh, superb smelling skills, uh, she's able to detect what we can't as humans. She'll be assisting in lots of different things, uh, from traffic stops to uh, school deployments in, in, our, in our schools here, Tualatin High School, Hazelbrook Middle School. She will be assisting us in, in uh, proactive missions to, de to deter uh, drug activity through UPS and through uh, the FedEx facilities, the Postal Service. She is very friendly. She might greet you with a little bark. Uh, just to say hi. She's got a lot of energy. Uh, she loves people. She loves to be around people. Um, you'll probably see us in the parks. You'll see us at Crawfish Festival. You'll see us um, at all kinds of different events. Twelve is not only a safe community, we're also working toward becoming a healthier community. In 2013, the Twelve and Tomorrow Advisory Committee convened an educational professionals forum from Portland Community College, Tower School District,